Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. So in this video, in this series of videos, we were seeing about how to design the performance test planning and the performance test strategies. And even in our previous video, we saw about how or what are all the document, what are all the parts or what are all the things that we have to bring it under the in scope and out scope. And we have clearly defined them we will see them more in detail and today in this video so in, in in fact in our previous video we saw about this scenario one where we have got the clients who tell us the or give us the clear details on the user load and the duration of the test so what in the other scenario where if the user just gives us that he just wants us to know that or he just wants us to achieve a number of a particular number of hits for the uh, script or for the application so then we will have to decide on how much users you will have to use for that particular script so in this example we will see so take for example we will see how many users we will need to achieve this api call so we will see we will also do a workload modeling and in fact I have a separate video on workload modeling in case if you have missed it please do check my playlist and before I move on to the video I request you all to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet so now let's take this example so we will decide how many users we need to achieve the load so take for example so the user tells us or the customer tells us that we need to achieve 12,000 hits per hour or we need to achieve 12,000 hits during the testing. So how are we going to do this? So for example, when it comes to an API call, we will either have it as a post call or a get call or get request. Either it can be post request or it can be get request. And take for example, if this particular API has a response time between 0.7 to 1 second, so let 0.7 to 1.2 seconds. So let's take an average of one second as the response time. And when it comes to think time, so we have already discussed that multiple times that we need to have at least an average of 20 seconds. So either it can be between 15 to 25 or in fact, we can, we can define that as a static think time of 20 seconds. So I'm defining here it as 20 seconds. And then since this is just one API request, one API call, we will have the pacing after every think time. So for example, if we are having a web application request where you have multiple transactions, say for example, you have transaction one, you have two, you have three, you have four. So you will be having think time in between these, so for example, Set one row below, set one row above, set one row above. So we will be having a response, uh, sorry, a think time in between each of these transactions. And then finally, we will have the pacing after the last transaction. This is going to be the last transaction. But when this is an API call, this is just going to be one request. So this is one request. And after that, we'll have the think time and then we'll have the pacing. So either we can have a separate think time or pacing or even we can merge it in the same. So we can have it as think time plus pacing. So here in this example, we will have it as separate. So think time of 20 seconds and a pacing of 10 seconds. So for each iteration it takes 31 seconds so for each iteration it takes 31 seconds to complete so which means one user in one hour he can achieve we'll calculate that so one hour has 3600 seconds divided by 31 seconds which is one iteration so we'll get 116 iterations for one user in one hour so which means for 10 users, we get 1,161 hits and for 100 users, we get around 
1,112 hits. So, let me bring it down. Yeah, so, in one, in one hour, one user can achieve 116, 10 users can achieve 1,161, and 100 users can achieve 11,613, which is close to 12,000. So, in fact, if for now, let's just stick to these numbers. So, 100 users can achieve 11,600 hits in one hour. So, by this way, we can identify how many users are we going to use for this testing. So, the same way, we can define for the entire set of scripts. So, that is how we can do a workload modeling and all these things has to be identified and documented during this phase and in fact we have discussed about identifying the dates the load test dates the soak test dates and then the spike test dates so taking for example like if we can do a testing of all these in a same day we can do it since these are one hour test so we can complete this test at least in two days and then we need eight hours eight non-business hours for doing this testing because we do not want to disturb the live machines network so we will have to run these tests during non-business hours so, so take for example you can start this test after 6 pm in a day or in fact you can start at the at the mid at the midnight of the day and then we can run it till the morning before the business hour starts so in this way we can achieve all sorts of testing and then even the spike test so take for example if we are planning this on monday and then we can complete this maximum by Tuesday and then we can plan the soak test on Wednesday Thursday and Friday and then the spike test again we can plan it on Monday and Tuesday so by this way we can complete this test in seven days after we get the code which is completely functionally tested and that's very important so we should start testing the application only after the application is completely functionally tested and in fact we can even adjust doing this test we can in fact do the load test in the morning and we can shift these testing the spike test soak test on the non-business hours since we have a separate environment for testing so by this way we can even achieve completing our test so we can even complete this test in just a week and make sure that we are preparing preparing the reports on the same day and we will do the analysis and in fact analysis needs a lot of time we will discuss that in the separate video so for now so far we have identified how to do the workload modeling how to analyze the and identify the load tests and the soak test so so far we have identified the how many how many number of users we have planned for a particular test so let's now move on to the next part so since we have decided the user so what we will have to do is we will have to split the user load and for this we must need a business analyst who tells us how much user load do we need to split between each user or each script and take for example if we are planning a 500 or we can take for example 300 users user load test so how are we going to distribute this 300 users between these scripts so take for example we can or like I already mentioned we can either the business analyst or the customer will tell us the distribution or we will have to find this through the analytics so somewhere we should need to 
collect the data because this is not something that we can decide and this is something which has to be collected from the Splunk or from the Google Data Analytics or any data analytics tool we should try to get collecting the data and for this example for example in this scenario if I'm the client I'm just giving a cost a, a distribution of 20% for shopping fish, 20% for shopping dogs, and 10% for reptiles, 10% for cats, and 10% for shopping birds. And login and logout will take a 20%. Let me have the total count here. So I have the total count. Here, which is 100% so this is already 100 so but still we need to we need add to cart so add to cart will be like 50% or like 40% of user does that and then search just searching will be around 20% so we will have to break down the distribution so for example 15 or like 10 another 10 percentage and 5 percentage here another 5 another 5 and here this can be just login logout so in fact this is in fact part of every other transaction so we can even keep it as 5 so in this way so we will have to know or we should know which one should be which which one covers the other transaction so if for example if this login and logout is too much or like has huge number of user load here so again this is getting covered in the other transaction so we should have the basic knowledge of how to break down the transactions so now see where we have achieved the 100 user load here so since we have got 300 users and the total percentage is 100 so which means 30 users for which means like three or like 30 users if it is 10 percentage let me create a sum again here and now we will see so 30 and then this is going to be again 30 and then this is going to be 15 and this is because this is three times our percentage so that's the reason I'm multiplying it by three and then again this is going to be 15 15 120 and 60 so in this way we can achieve 300 user loads and this is the user load for each of these scripts so this is just an example so in case if you have in a distribution you should first define this user load distribution because this is the same user load which we are it's not about the user load but it's going to be the same user distribution for any of our load test or soak test or spike test so we should be very careful in defining these user load distribution before we move on to any of our testing so I think we have almost completed so if you can see here so we have just got stuck in this page for a long long time because this page already as I told you like this page takes 60 percent of the effort of the total effort so this in fact takes the entire amount of time because this actually taking more time in this phase will actually save us a lot of time in the later phases and in fact it will save a lot of time and money so please do make sure that you complete all the missing factors or all the missing points so you should connect every dots from this page before you move on to the next part of the testing so I think in fact we would have just even missed something so we will try to fill that in our next videos. So I think this video would have been very useful to you. So until I meet you in our next video, it's bye bye from Vasanjanugam and Little's Law.